Hello, welcome, Commissar Marag here. Today we are going to take a look at the trade tips and tricks for C3 Augustus and how do the trade monuments work and how you can interpret quota amounts and all the relevant stuff. So to start with, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about this, uh, where we are. So I loaded up a city by Fairby on one of my maps and so I'm here with you because he actually has both a caravan Sarai constructed as a lighthouse, which we are going to talk about these two structures at a, bit, a little bit later. But the first thing we need to uh, address is um, how, do, how does trade work in general? So the very basic things you need to know is the traders will spawn from an entry point and head towards an exit point. It's the entry point, red flag and it will head towards an exit point on the map, which is this blue flag. And so, depending on how the large the map is, you can only have certain amount of caravans per each city on a map at the same time. And it is, uh, in Vanilla or Julius, it is always two caravans, unless the city buys a single category of goods that's up to three shields, which is 40 units in Julius or Vanilla. And then it would send three ships or three caravans to your city. And so if you take a look at Malita's trade route, which is a sea trade route, it sells us two shields of vegetables, two shields of fruit, two shields of vines, and it buys a bit of olives, a bit of oil, and a bit of iron. It actually would not offer you the benefits of what I talked about. It would only send two caravans, because it, none of these single type of goods are at three shields of 40 units. And so um, Augustus actually handles it differently. Uh, where it adds up all the quota that is there for all the goods and then it interprets the caravan uh, amount that is sent to your city. And this is dynamic, so it can change with events. If the quota for some goods decrease or increase, it will change. And so the exact numbers are, if the single city is uh, together buying or selling goods of zero up to 60 amount in total, it will send just one caravan. If it's 60 up to 120 of goods in total, it will send two caravans or trade ships. And if it is 120 or more, it will send three caravans or trade ships. So this more closely resembles what your city will need and how many traders are there going to be needed to fulfill all the quotas. This is important because, as I mentioned, you can only have two caravan, uh, or you can only have so many caravans or ships on the map at the same time because um, they need to actually come onto the map, go and trade and then leave and then it can spawn a new one. And why is this relevant? Is because the trade caravan itself or the trade ship itself has only a certain capacity. With the caravans it's eight units. The single caravan can uh, buy eight units and then it can also sell you eight units and then it needs to leave the map. And so you can see this one sold 12. That's because the trade buildings do affect it. We'll take a look at it later. But for now, just keep in mind, caravan is eight and trade ship is, where's the trade ship? It must be a trade Another ship. Another successful yeah. So with trade ships, the profit from this place makes the seasickness bearable. <laughs> it's actually 12 units of goods that it can buy, which can be further boosted by, uh, a lighthouse but we'll talk about it later so that's why you actually need to keep the traders coming and going quickly so that you can fulfill the quotas that are there because the quotas do refresh each year and so you can use this number to interpret how many of different production structures you need to be able to constantly yearly fulfill that quota and so in this case like it's 15 oil that would be bought and we know that each workshop produces 4.8 of that good per year so if you add uh, three workshops, you should be able to produce just enough, maybe slightly below. So you might need four workshops and that would, then it would be fine on oil at all times. And so, yeah, you need to keep caravans going uh, so that your city can effectively make money. Uh, the things that can happen are uh, either sandstorms, landslides or sea trade problems. And these two things are uh, interruptions of trade which can last uh, up to three months I think and it will force no additional caravans or trade ships to be spawned while that lasts and these events can be reduced by half if you construct the relevant trade structures trade monuments like a caravanserai which is a building that um, 
consumes food for each caravan animal that enters the map, but it gives you certain benefits. And same thing for ships, which is a lighthouse, so it will continuously burn timber and offer you benefits like slash uh, duration of sea trade problems by half. With lighthouse, it actually does boost 10% uh, uh, speed of fishing ships and trade ships, and so that's, uh, or uh, pardon me, it's just fishing ship speed. But it can be useful if you have a lot of wharfs. It, the travel speed is actually one of the, one of the things that limits uh, the output quite a bit. So having that is usually pretty good. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about is the, yeah, let's start with the Caravanserai. So Caravanserai is a simple structure. It costs 500 denarii to build, which isn't that much. Um, the problem with that is it is a monument, so it will require some clay, timber and marble to be built. It's not that much though, so you can probably justify it quite early. And what happens is it acts as a market basically. It sends out a walker that's gonna go to a granary and collect food and bring it back. Uh, it works like another market, so you can see it has 760 fruit in it. That doesn't mean that there is 760 fruit produced for uh, from the farms, which mm, you know that each production structure, like a farm, produces 9.6 raw goods per year, so 760 is not the right amount, it's actually 7.6 because it's amplified by 100 when a market lady or caravanserai fetches food from a granary, the granary actually stores that food, it's 24 fruit, it's not 200, 2400, so you can think of it like without the zeros, that's the amount of carts, cart loads of uh, fruit that is uh, in there. And so how that works is for caravanserai, for each animal from a caravan that is spawned on your map, it will actually consume 10 pieces of that food for each animal in a caravan. And caravan has three animals in it. Each caravan has three donkeys or three camels in it. So it's gonna be 30 food for each caravan that spawns. And it's gonna continuously eat that. So you need to keep it stocked up, otherwise it's not gonna give you the benefits. It will also further increase if you pick the final uh, there are three options of trade policy you can pick. Each one will cost 500 to implement and you can only have one at the same time. Uh, so the first one is uh, landed sellers policy. Land exports earn 20% more, but land imports are 10% more expensive. So this one, if you export a lot of things and you only import raw goods or very slight amount of goods, it, this would be worth it so that you earn more. And also if you are fulfilling your quotas without problems, you pick this one. Uh, the other one is imports are 20% cheaper, but land exports are less. And this is bad because if it reduces your like olive price that's costing like 30 denarii and it reduces by 20, yeah, that's great. But it will also like, um, if you're selling pottery for 140 and you subtract 10%, uh, it's actually gonna lose you more money because of that reduction. So this would be only situationally useful in case you are importing a lot of goods on some map for some reason, like manufactured stuff like wine or oil, then you might want to pick this one, but it's situationally useful. The best one is this one. Ap uh, apart from a situation where you are not fulfilling your quota correctly because of the length of the map or constant problems with trade, and so what you would do is you would pick up the third one, which is actually Concilium Quantitas. And that uh, buffs the amount of uh, goods each caravan can buy by four. So that will go up to 12 okay. instead of eight can units per each caravan, which is effectively going to boost their efficiency by 50%. And that can be really good. It also increases the consumption rate of food by 20%. Though. So for each caravan, each animal, you would actually be paying 12 food instead of 10. And that could uh, amount to a lot if there are a lot of caravans happening. It also will uh, have an upkeep or levy of 8 denarii per month. So that can add up because it's 96 denarii per year. So you're basically paying almost 100 denarii plus workers. So that's 20 workers. Uh, running this building and how we can tell how much you are paying these people uh, actually is you can take 10 worker amount you are employing per year and you take a look at your wages and uh, the wages is currently here it's 27 denarii per uh, yeah uh, wages are set to 27 denarii so you will pay 10 workers 27 denarii per year in this example so that that's how you can calculate Wages. So in this case, the caravanserai would cost us uh, like 140 something 
denarii per year in total plus the food we are eating. So uh, you could also amount some food uh, farms, workers and such so that you know exactly. But it's worth it and some of the benefits are really really good. It's just you need to maximize your possibilities with it. And so um, the trader behavior also needs to be noted because you don't want the caravans to be doing stuff like this, uh, ping-ponging back because the caravans actually do prefer to first sell you your things that you are importing from them. So let's say theoretically there is a trade route that would sell you timber and it would buy marble. So you can see that there is timber warehouse in here and there is a marble warehouse in here. The caravan would appear from here and it would go, oh, I need to sell first. So it will go all the way up here, sell the timber and then it will go back and buy the marble and then it will leave the map. So how you would do it is if do you have options in life, which on this map it's very tight, but you would be setting up your warehouses that are for imports closer. So you would leave this space more open and set up your export somewhere in midway across the map or nearby the exit point so that the traders always trade and go and leave so they don't ping pong back because ping ponging back is causing you delays and this caravan is not leaving the map even though it should be because it has bought 12 units of iron and new caravan could spawn which would buy more if there is quota for it it's just this trader wants to go back and sell you some more clay so you don't want that to happen if you can avoid it therefore be mindful of that also if you have a trade route that for example they buy marble and you have another marble warehouse somewhere in the distance you can actually set it so that you disable land traders from coming here but be mindful of that uh, the natives will also native trader will also not go there if you flick this option off you can do the same for ship uh, traders which will mean the carters from the dock when the ship is docked will not go to that warehouse which can be useful or market ladies can be forbidden from coming here now uh, another thing i forgot to mention with the caravan sarai is a native trader that spawns and goes to trade with you will also consume 10 or 12 food from the caravan sarai as any other trade animal would because uh, it's a trader so that's how it works and so yeah uh, caravan sarai just Keep in mind these consumption rates. It can be something that you need to account for with more food production so that it does not crumble. And uh, yeah, the other thing that we need to talk about is the lighthouse. And the lighthouse is a structure that can be built only near water, but it does not need to be the tradable water like a river where the trade ships actually happen from. It can be built nearby a pond or even a single tile of water somewhere. You can build it around that. And a lighthouse actually does not work like the caravan sarai with its consumption rates. It will consume timber, but it's a set rate of 0.4 timber per year, uh, per month. So that amounts to 4.8 uh, units of timber per year, which is conveniently output of a single timber yard. So a single timber yard can keep the consumption rate of basic lighthouse going without any interruptions throughout the whole year. And so the lighthouse boosts uh, speed of your fishing ships by 10% and it will also make your uh, sea trade problems last only half as long, which is useful. Uh, you can also pick trade policies for it, but first let's take a look at the levy. It's the same as with the uh, caravan so it's 8 denarii per month, so it amounts to 96 denarii per year of levy plus 20 employees. So that's 27 denarii per 10 employees as we looked at that before so it's again at about 140 50 denarii per year you are paying for this monument to be kept going now it works like with food so it grabs this timber from the warehouse and it splits it into units so this is 5.8 timber in here currently and it will consume 0 0.4 of that unit so 40 of this split up amount so from this 580 each month it will burn 40 units of that timber and so uh, it can also be boosted if you pick up the, uh, these, these upgrades are the same by the way, it either boosts your exports while decreasing your imp uh, like by or by, you know, it will increase your prices of imports or you can do the opposite by reducing the price you are paying for imports, which is situationally useful <coughs> because it will decrease your export uh, prices. Or you can pick up the final one, which is boost capacity for ships by four goods for each ship. And it will mean the, the, the lighthouse will consume 20% extra timber, which amounts to 
0 .0 0 0.48 units of timber per month, which amounts to um, uh, five plus timber, which means that you need more than one timber yard to um, effectively run it. And uh, for ships, it's actually not that useful to have the four extra goods capacity selected unless it's a specific circumstance. And that's because the ships actually uh, by, by, by default have higher capacity than traders, like uh, caravans. So um, it's much better to go with the prices usually. And so yeah, that's how trade works. Uh, the other thing that we need to talk about is custom empires. Uh, in C3 Augustus, there's been added a new feature in the stable build, which is called custom empires. And how it works is each city can be modified with an XML file by the map maker to make it so that city can buy, for example, only one oil or like seven oil or anything that's not um, for relevant to the basic quota system, as we mentioned before, the shields. Uh, so that they don't buy one, two or three shields anymore, like 15, 25 or 40, but they go to a ran not random amount, but the exact amount the player wants or the map maker wants you to be able to buy. And so when you open up a trade route in uh, C3 Augustus on the new Unstable, be sure to always check the exact numbers of goods because it can be something unconventional. It can be like seven or 13 or 19 or something like that. So you might need to tweak your production to match that. And also uh, it can go up much higher than 40 because in Vanilla or Julius it can only be up to 40. In Augustus with the custom empires it can go up to 200 goods for that particular city, for that particular good. So in this case Malitus could buy up to 200 uh, or sell us up to 200 fruit. Or it could buy up to 200 oil if you said it so, but it would be kind of insane. So um, that is actually represented on the trade screen like if you Check, uh, check out an unopened trade route. It will actually display the shields being either bronze or silver or gold, but I, don't, I cannot tell you the exam, uh, exact numbers for it because the people are able to actually tweak the exact number of goods. And so the shields are only generalistic uh, indication of how many things you can actually buy from them. So if you see a silver or golden shield, you open it up, you will expect that it will be ranging from either like 80 to 100 with silver or 100 plus up to 200 for the gold ones so just keep that in mind and yeah that's gonna sum up my um, my tips and tricks on the trade if you have any questions regarding this topic you can ask me in the comments i'll try to answer to the best of my ability i hope that this has been at least a bit useful and i hope to see you next time bye